Hello and welcome to Alpha Militaria TV. Thanks very much for tuning in once again. My name is Richard Saunders. Now, um, I hope you like the new studio. It's a lot warmer than the other one. Um, when I say studio, I mean my garage. Um, but anyway, let us know if you've got any thoughts in the comments below. Now, also down below, you'll find a link to our website, which is alphamilitaria.com. Uh, and on there, you'll find uh, reviews of air rifles, you'll find articles and features about air gunning topics. And you'll also find our store where we sell scopes and some air gun accessories. Also down below is a link to our Discord channel where there's lots of good air gun chat going on. So you might want to join that. And also to some Amazon pages for some products that I use on a regular basis. Now back to the review that we're doing today. It's a, a new model of an existing rifle. It is the Brokox Sahara XR, uh, based very much on the uh, Brokox Sniper XR, but has a few changes to it. Um, obviously the main one is this uh, sand colored or Sahara, it's the name, uh, stock. Uh, but what we'll do is we'll run through the rifle from back to front as we usually do. We'll focus in on the key points. We'll point out the couple of differences that exist between the Sahara XR and the regular Sniper XR. Um, we'll go through the whole magazine system, the air fitting system as well. And then we'll end up on the range where I'll put a few shots through it and see how it shoots. Now there's not a great amount of difference between the, uh, the Sahara XR and the Sniper XR, the rifle that this is based on. The most obvious difference is of course the stock. Now this polymer stock has a, uh, a sand color finish, hence the name, and is extremely durable. Now I'm not suggesting for one minute that you're gonna wanna go out smashing your gun against things in the dark, but you know, if you're out hunting, especially in, in the dark, there's every chance you're gonna clonk a gate or a fence or a piece of fire machinery and you know with a wooden stock that's going to upset you but this is much much more durable um, and really will withstand those kind of battle scars now the other differences are that the rifle overall is 820 millimeters and that's slightly shorter than the sniper xr because the barrel is slightly shorter as well now the barrel is about 400 i think it's 430 millimeters or 17 inches which is a good couple of inches shorter than on the sniper xr um, and also on this model, you get uh, a Picatinny rail top and bottom. Now in time on a tradition, here's one I prepared earlier. This is your, this is a standard um, Sniper XR. And as you can see, yeah, very, very similar apart from the stock, but the barrel is a good couple of inches longer on the, on the Sniper XR. Now then from working our way from back to front on the rifle. At the back you have this curved solid rubber shoulder pad. It's nice and comfortable. It's quite hard. There's no, you know, there's no give in it, but you know, because this is a recoilless rifle, you don't need any give. Um, there's a, an Allen bolt in the middle here at the back, which if you slacken that off, uh, that will allow you to adjust this, uh, this shoulder pad up and down. And then there are a couple of um, Allen screws on the top of the rifle just below the cheek piece on this side, which again, if you slacken those off, allows you to move this uh, cheek piece up and down as well. Now the combination of the two means that you can get perfect shoulder fit and perfect eye alignment uh, for a scope, you know, regardless of, of what size you are. Now, um, the scope itself is mounted on a, a Picatinny rail. Uh, there's a short rail at the back here and a longer rail at the front. As I said, that comes standard um, on, the, uh, on the Sahara XR. But if you prefer to use uh, dovetail mounts, then you can simply re remove these Picatinny rails and use the underlying dovetail mounts. Now, one thing I would say if you do that, with the Picatinny uh, mount, uh, rails on, you can see that the magazine is pretty much flush with the rails. If you take the Picatinny rails off and use the dovetails, then the magazine will sit a little bit proud, just something to bear in mind. Now, for those of you who are interested, the scope on here is the new MTC Copperhead. This is the three to 12 by 44, and they also do a four to 16 by 44 as well. And for a, a, a pretty compact um, semi bullpup rifle like this, now this scope is ideal because it's very compact, very short, um, but has standard eye relief. I think it's a 90 millimeter um, eye relief. So yeah, it suits this kind of rifle really, really well. Um, and it's held on with a set of the new MTC uh, adjustable mounts. 
Um, which are great because if you run out of a little bit of elevation, let's say in your scope, you can actually adjust your point of impact by adjusting the mounts themselves. Um, and it also means that you know, you're gonna get clearance over magazines or anything else um, on your rifle. Now, one word of warning with these, these mounts, I have seen identical looking mounts uh, for sale um, elsewhere uh, that aren't branded as MTC uh, and they're much, much cheaper. Now, as I understand it, that's because they use lower quality steel or lower tensile quality steel. So um, you know, if you go onto the MTC website or you go into a, your gun shop and you look at the MTC adjustable mounts and you see that they're higher priced, it's because they are better quality steel. Anyway, enough of that. Um, the, uh, there's a nice large cutout here for your hand. Um, there's um, some uh, ridges on the back here, a little bit of stippling on the pistol grip as well. To be honest, the, the polymer overall is very, very grippy. Um, but with your, your hand on the pistol grip, gives you good access to the trigger. Um, now the trigger itself is a post and shoe trigger and uh, means that you can adjust the angle of the post. You can also adjust the length of pull and the weight of pull as well uh, on the two stages. Now the two stages, there's a very clear uh, defined stop between the two. And then when you give it that final little piece of pressure, it breaks very, very cleanly. Now, the trigger, uh, the safety catch itself is based inside the, the trigger guard. You know, I don't, I'm not a big fan of that, but it is very, very accessible and it does lock everything up nicely. You push it from the, the right um, to the left to make the gun live. And then you push it from the left through to the right to make the gun safe. So when you're ready to take a shot, it's just simply a case of pushing it off with your trigger finger to, uh, to make the rifle safe. And then um, above the cocking side lever here, which we're talking about in a second, is a, a power dial. Um, and there's basically three settings to this. It works by adjusting the transfer port. And most people are going to leave that, most 12 foot power shooters are going to leave that on the maximum setting. But it is useful if you're shooting in a barn or you're shooting um, in a garden, for example, and you want to drop the power a little bit. Each um, uh, setting is about 20% lower than the setting before. Now, obviously, if you're going to be shooting this in FAC format, that power gauge uh, or that power dial is a lot more useful. And I should say that this rifle is available in 18 foot pounds in 177 and 30 foot pounds in 22. And um, if you want to go to five caliber, um, which I think is 50 foot pounds, you can do that, but you're effectively buying the, uh, the Patagonia model um, so it, or the Magnum model. So it's the same rifle, it just has a longer barrel, but you can get it in this uh, Sahara sand color finish apparently. Now, <clears throat> moving forward, or so moving back, you have the, the side lever. Now the side lever, um, on the Brokaw XR range is, is superb, it's one of the best. Now, they uh, Brokaw moved from uh, a bolt action about two, two and a bit years ago now, uh, and the bolt was quite stiff and quite sort of clunky. And I, th in my opinion, moving to this um, this side lever action really transform, transferred, transformed the entire range. It's very, very smooth, um, not at all floppy, each movement is nicely defined, but it's very, very light to use and has just the right amount of mechanical action um, for you to sort of appreciate the engineering behind it. Uh, it's not sprung. There's a first stage to there, then you put it back a second stage to fully cock the rifle and then you move it forward and that drives um, a pellet through the magazine. Now we'll look at the magazine in a little bit more close up detail in a second or two, um, but it's uh, the all metal Brocock design. It's this magnetic gated design takes 13 shots in uh, 177, 11 shots in 22, and 10 shots in 25. As I say, we'll show you that in a second or two. Uh, the barrel itself is, is fully shrouded. Um, and if you want to put a silencer, you can do so by uh, removing this cap at the end, which gives you access to a half inch UNF to put your silencer uh, on. Now, when we go down the range, I'll shoot this with a silencer and without a silencer so we can see, we can tell the difference. And then on the side here, you have two gauges. 
the top one is uh, for, uh, is the, the regulator gauge. This rifle comes with a Huma regulator as standard, as do all Brokop rifles. And really the, the aim of the, the regular ga regulator gauge is, you can't adjust the regulator on a 12 foot pound rifle, but um, by having the gauge, it enables you to make sure that the rifle is performing as it should be. You know, if the, if the needle starts moving on the regulator gauge and it goes and it starts dropping or the pressure increases, then you obviously have a problem with your rifle that you need to get it sorted out. And then below it is the, the, the fill pressure gauge. And this rifle takes about a, a 250 bar fill. Don't be put off by the scary red segment because this is regulated. You can fill this to 250 bar uh, and that will give you around about 460 shots in 2.2 and about 420 in 177. Underneath, you have a, a short uh, Picatinny rail. Um, just uh, behind this uh, 480cc uh, carbon wrapped uh, bottle. And you fill that by removing a, a plastic cap um, under, on the underneath, which um, uh, when you remove that, that reveals the, uh, the, the, the fill valve. And we'll show you how to fill the rifle in just a second or two. So I think we've covered everything on the rifle. What we'll do now is we'll uh, zoom in on some of those features in close up and then we'll show you how to fill the magazine and how to fill the rifle with air. The magazine is the same as all other um, Brokop models shipping right now. It's um, all metal and self-indexing. Self and it has this uh, magnetized gate on the front that uh, flips down like, like so. And then once you've done that, you're going to want to rotate the inner drum clockwise as far as it will go. You know, and if you let go, it'll just flick straight back again. But just rotate that as far as it will go clockwise and just hold it there then hopefully you can see at the bottom here, the gap um, between the bottom two chambers is, um, is bigger than it is elsewhere. And what you want to do is you want to put a pellet nose first to the left hand side of that larger gap, like so. And in doing that, that will hold that magazine, that drum against the, uh, the spring. And then it's just a case of dropping the pellets in one by one and you can do them once you've held that um, the chamber against the spring then um, you can put them in in any order you like now one thing i have noticed with these brocock magazines is that sometimes on some of them uh, the pellets will go in and they'll fall sort of right down deep inside the chamber other times they'll sit on the top like that you know um, nice and visible um, it's not an issue, it just means that you need to be careful to make sure that you don't mistakenly put two pellets in the same chamber, or try to. Now once you've loaded all the, the, the pellets into the chambers, simply close that magnetic gate back up again, and then you're ready to insert it into, uh, into the breech, and we'll show you that next. So the magazine uh, I've taken all the pellets out of this, this magazine now to make it safe. The magazine is very easy to locate in the breech. Now, um, what you need to do is pull back the side lever all the way to cock the rifle. Make sure that your safety catch is on. And then with that, uh, that uh, flip up plate facing back towards you, you want to insert the magazine in from the right hand side of the breech. Now, all broke up rifles have the magazine going in from the right hand side for the pure reason that um, some people have a scope with a large um, uh, parallax wheel on the left-hand side that could get in the way of the magazine going into the breech. So to get around that, 
Brokoct have, have designed all of their magazines to go in from the right hand side as standard. Um, once you put it into the breech, magnets inside there will kind of self locate it and sort of pull it into the breech fully. And then once it's in, it's just a case of returning the side lever and you're good to go. Now, as with all Brokoct rifles, uh, there's no filler probe uh, that comes with the rifle. Instead, you just want to pull off this magnetized cap um, at the, on the underside and that will reveal the, the fill valve directly. And that is designed for a, uh, a foster fit to snap directly onto the valve. There's no adapter for it. And uh, one thing though you might want to consider is uh, it's worth buying one of those extended uh, foster uh, quick fit adapters um, rather than the sort of the standard short ones because the longer ones just give you a little bit more real estate to get your fingers in there to disconnect it. Um, and then once you fill up to 250 bar, uh, 250 bar, just remove the air hose and then put that cap back on again. Now, because this rifle is regulated with the Huma regulator and it also has the revised and uprated um, valve system from the Sniper XR, as I said before, you can expect around about 460 shots from a 2.2 rifle at 12 foot pounds and around about 420 from a 12 foot pound rifle in 177 caliber. Well, that's a quick rundown on the Brokoc Sahara XR. Next stage is to take it down the range, put a few pellets in it and see how it shoots. So I popped down to Reading Air Target Shooting Club as usual to give the Sahara XR a bit of a try on the range. Uh, now I'm using Air Arms Dablo Fill pellets. These are the uh, 4.52 millimeter size, as I always do. And I sort of target out at 30 meters. It's a little bit blowy. We're in between a couple of storms at the moment, um, but we'll give it a go. Try a few shots with the silencer off now. I've been using this 0 dB silencer and it works pretty well. But just uh, for the sake of doing it, I'll try the last few shots without a silencer. quite a bit louder. I think this is the last one. No, the last one was the one before. Well, a lot louder without a silencer on, um, but let's go and see what the group is like. Well, there you have it. That's our review of the Brokoc Sahara XR. Really nice rifle. Um, lots of adjustment in the, uh, in the stock here. Plenty of shots from that regulated action. Nice, smooth, silky smooth side lever action too, and plenty accurate and with the silencer on nice and quiet too anyway i hope you found that useful if you did please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe as well and if you'd like more information about this rifle 
other Brocock rifles and a whole range of other air gunning topics, check out our website, which is alphamilitaria.com. Thanks for watching.